let's start streaming. Okay. First, uh, I have to share the screen. And I have to let you. Exactly. One second. <laughs> there we are. One second. There you go. Amazing. Good. Uh, thank you. Share screen. There we are. Well, uh, your, your uh, work was the best one. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it was really, really good. I'm looking for it now. Your yes. Well, we can, we can see it in detail. Uh, I wrote uh, some, some indications here with red. Uh, just uh, I wrote them with red because uh, it is like most is the color that most stands stands out. That's why, uh, <laughs> but they are not. Uh, I mean, big mistakes. Everything is is good. Um, the first thing that I know it is kind of a silly mistake, but it is important is the tempo. Uh, you did a really great job because you marked everything, the dynamics, the the hair spin, the hair hairpins, um, the the VCs, uh, the unisons. Um, I mean, it, it is very great, but uh, please don't forget the indication of the tempo, the tempo mark, uh, because imagine that uh, you you give this score to a, to a, I don't know, to a string orchestra, and they have to play this, uh, they can't start to play because they don't know the tempo. Uh, so that little things are, are important. Uh, well, now talking about orchestration, uh, it's really good. Uh, you decided to put the the main melody, the one that was in the in the piano piece, in the right hand, this one. You decided to put it in the first violin. That is very great because uh, the. So, if you sorry, see sorry the, to interrupt. I we cannot. I cannot see anything. Is is this me or? I can see. You cannot. I can personally. I can see. Ca can you see the score? Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I selected the option share the screen, and so I think I'm sharing it. One thing. Let's if you see. want, I can do it again. I can stop sharing. Yeah. Okay. Let me see. Wait. Fit to window. Hundred percent. Because I cannot see anything. Original size. Two hundred percent. Yeah. Can Can you do it one more time? Because. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Yes. No. Nothing. Nothing. Sure. There you go. Okay. Uh, all good. All fine. Working. Fantastic. Okay. False alarm. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see if I can. Web view options, ratio. Oh, there you so, go. Perfect. Sorry. It was me. Okay, was no, me. no My problem. Bad. Okay. Keep going. Thank you. Uh, so here, uh, Georgios decided to put the, the, the main melody uh, in the first violin. Because if we look at the at the compass, the ambitus of the melody goes from E4, that is the first anacrusis, uh, that is the lowest note, uh, to E5. So it is uh, an ambitus of one octave, and it is in a perfect register to be played by the first violin. Uh, and another great thing is that he didn't use the VC in the first violin because he wants all the players of the section, the 16 players, to be playing that melody. So that melody 
can uh, stand out uh, very clearly. Um, then the accompaniment that is the background, it is not, I mean, it is an important part that it doesn't have to sound very loud. He used the VC in the second violins and in the cellos. So there he's divided the, the, the accompaniment. Uh, I mean, in the second violin part, there will be, uh, let's suppose that in the second violin uh, section, we have 14 players. Uh, we would have seven of them playing the, the top part. That one. And the other seven players of the second violin section playing the, the lower part. That one. Um, so uh, it is a very great decision uh, what he did. Um, then the, the doubling of the melody, he put it in the viola, uh, what is also a great decision because that register uh, of the viola is good to play that melody. Uh, see that almost all the notes are written uh, in the like inside the stuff. Uh, in general, when you write for any instrument and you write using the the five lines and spaces of the stuff, it means that you are writing in a good register, in in a comfortable register to play. Um, and uh, if we see here, all the almost all the instruments are written using the, the lines and the spaces of the staff. He is not using Fletcher lines. Uh, well, in the second violin, he is using a couple of Fletcher lines, but it is okay because uh, it is uh, the, the, the lowest note he is uh, writing is uh, A3. And that note can perfectly be played in the second violin. Um, and then the cello, uh, well, he did a DVC and it is a perfect register, that one, to be played in the cello. Uh, here, what I marked with red that says rhythm is because you, you, uh, you didn't write the rhythm uh, correctly there. Uh, it is just uh, uh, a little mistake. Uh, maybe you got confused because of the of the silences, the 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 rest, the the eight rest. Uh, that one, the one I marked with red, should be an an upbeat. Um, only that. Then uh, this is for Laura and for Iris. Uh, see that he marked all the articulations uh, very clearly, uh, like very detailed markings. Also, he wrote the bowings that are are very very good. Uh, he's starting the anacrosis of the melody with an up bow, and then he begins the downbeat with a down bow. Uh, then uh, these notes in the melody. The first, uh, well, the second, third, and fourth note of the melody, uh, he chose a, a down bow, uh, and then we understand that the next, uh, the this note, the 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 fourth note of the first measure, uh, he uses an uh, an up bow again. And he starts the next measure in the second measure. He starts starts with a down bow. Um, so the the artic the articulations and bowings are are very nice. Um, well, these four measures we know that are a repetition. Uh, uh, one thing I suggest that you do. Uh, when you do this kind of uh, works, this kind of orchestration, try, uh, if you can, to uh, 
copy like the visual the visual structure of the piano score to the uh, to the orchestration you are doing for example if we see the piano score uh, i think i have it here this is the 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 piano part uh, we have the first idea musical idea written in the first four measures and they are all in the same in the same in some line uh, so we see perfectly that the first musical idea has four measures and we end in a half cadence uh, now if i go again to the orchestration of Georgios. Uh, here we have three measures and the half cadence is in the other in the other uh, in the next uh, line um, that is a little bit uncomfortable to read so if you can uh, like uh, like keep the the visual structure of the of the piano piece is better it will help you it will help you that you are orchestrating and it will help the people that is reading your score also. Um, well, here uh, you decided in the double bass to write uh, uh, that note. You added that note. I think that that is not the best uh, the best option because uh, here you are playing the same note, so it is sounding the same note. In the double uh, in the double bass and in the in the cello part, so this E uh, is sounding in the double bass and in the cello, but in the cello you are uh, playing several times that pitch, and in the double bass you are holding it, so it's like contradictory. Uh, the, to have two different articulations with the same pitch. I think that here yeah, would be better. A way to uh, have a pedal on the E. A pedal? That's how I thought it would, like, would imitate the pedal. Uh, so, I mean, you, here you are trying to simulate the, the piano pedal. Mm -hmm. uh, well, okay, but in the in the score, uh, there is no a uh, pedal uh, there. There is no a uh, pedal marking. Mm, there's a cadence. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I mean, it is great the decision of choosing a, a double bass there uh, because uh, there is a cadence uh, and it is, well, a half cadence uh, and it is an important part and you can emphasize it if you want. I mean, the, the most common solution to this part, what Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, or Schubert could have done here, probably, is to write what I what I wrote in red in with with red. This the most common use of the double basses is to double the part of the cello. Uh, that that would be the, the most common, I mean, solution. Uh, it is not necessarily bad what you did, uh, but I I think that you are you are using the two like contrary articulations. You are playing several times in the cello the same note. But you are holding that that same note in the double basis. Uh, well, what what I could have done here, and and if we study orchestral works and we study Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, we see that most of the times they uh, with the double basis uh, they don't write a real independent line, but they. Uh, double the, the cello part. Uh, well, another thing here is that you you wrote the VC again. I think that this happened because 
you copy, copy, you you wrote the first four measures. Yeah, tell me. Copy paste. Just, yeah. yeah, copy paste. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I mean, it is not it is not bad to write DVC again, but it is not necessary. Uh, now, if you had written here at the beginning the tempo, and you copy and paste here, you would have pasted the tempo again. So when you do, it, it is okay to copy and to paste, uh, but uh, you have to pay attention to those details uh, because you don't have the tempo to be to be marked every time you copy and you paste. <laughs> Uh, and the same with DVC, but I, I repeat, this is not bad, it, it is just not necessary. Um, well, here again, the, you you copied and pasted, so the, the rhythm, the problem with the rhythm there is repeated. Uh, what else? Uh, well, here the, the the same the same thing with the cellos and the double basses. I think that that is not the best option. There, uh, maybe you you could there double the, the cello, and would be a more practical solution. Uh, also, you are changing the the inversion of the chord there because here you have a um, E major chord. Then again, E major chord, and uh, in the real in the real piece, there you have a A minor in a root position, and when you write the that E in the in the double basis, you are changing the inversion of the A minor chord. Uh, it is a, a subtle difference, but it is not uh, the same as it is not the same to hear the A minor chord in root position or in double inversion. Um, well, what I really, really like liked about your your orchestration is how you solve this part. I think it's really, really great. Uh, we have this section. Uh, and here, you decided to write the the melody again in the first violin. So you understood that there uh, we we have the melody again and you put it in the first violin. And uh, here in the second violin, you uh, you wrote the BC, but you want the 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 let's say the, the upper part of the DVC to play a double stop, right? Yes. Yes, a very great decision because that is a, a very easy double stop to play because you have one open string uh, and the other one you play it with your index finger, the, the B. Uh, so it is a very easy double stop and a, a very clever solution to this passage. Um, um, well, here, uh, well, here you are using the the double bass to to simulate the effect of the sustaining pedal. Um, that is great. I mean, you are uh, uh, simulating the the effect of the pedal and and making a little bit of contrast because you are adding a new voice uh, that sounds one octave lower. So it is great. Uh, well, here it is everything all right. I have nothing to say. Uh, let me see what else. Here it is a repetition. Uh, also, the, the articulations are are really good because I didn't mention that uh, here in the in the new section that says you wrote that portato articulation uh, and it is great because each of those each of of those those notes 
uh, you have to play them with a different uh, with a different direction of the bow, and it works perfectly. Uh, How to change well, the slurs to make the bow work sometimes? Yes, uh, and that is a, a great solution too because you don't have to copy when you uh, when you take a um, a piece for the for the piano and orchestrate it to the strings. You don't have to copy the slurs because what it works in the piano, uh, it probably doesn't work in the string instruments. So it, it is uh, really good what you did. You you instead of trans translating the each element, uh, you translated the meaning of the music. Uh, that is what we have to do when we orchestrate. It's like when we are uh, like translating, let's say, from from one language to another, that we don't translate word by word, but we 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 get the meaning of the whole phrase, and then we translate the meaning. Uh, so he understand, uh, he understood. Sorry, the piece, and once he understood it, he translated. Uh, that that meaning that musical idea to the string orchestra. Uh, well, and here at the end uh, you forgot to write a uh, one slur. Yeah, that yeah. that one that I wrote with red, uh, but it is just a, a little mistake because that is a, a dotted quarter note. Yeah, yeah, I don't know, probably something like copy paste. Some mistake. Yeah, uh, but it is just a very little mistake. Um, and here there is something that I didn't understand what you wanted to do. Um, the the in the in the piano score, the the bass goes like this. So it is a, a descending uh, a descending line. I don't know why you why you wrote it like an ascending line. I don't know. I was thinking about it. What should I do? If it would make sense to finish so so low the A, and I thought maybe not. But then I thought, what if uh, I could put the, the the dominant an octave lower? Mm, but it's not like that on the piece. But it couldn't be like that on the piece because we don't have that long finger. So maybe. Uh, who is it? Schubert wouldn't mind. Maybe he would like it to be a low E, as it's usually done. done. But, and I thought, okay, I'll do it. Why not? I know I could put the lower A, but uh, I haven't put a low A during the piece at all. So I thought it would be too odd to put suddenly one there. Maybe. Yeah. Okay, well, here in these kind of situations that, I mean, you, you made it on purpose, that is important because you, you took a decision there. Uh, but in these kind of cases, I would follow the voice leading. The, the C sharp is going to A, uh, the, the C sharp results to A, and well, in the original score, the E, goes clearly to a low A. So once you have this part, now the only thing you do, uh, you double the cello, uh, you you double the, the cello part with the double basses. So it is, uh, let me think. But well, there uh, in in that case, I would um, follow the what what Schumann wrote that it was a descending line. Uh, that's it. But uh, that's it. Uh, it is just a detail. But it is important to understand that the most common use of the double bass is to double the part of the cello and. Uh, Usually, at least uh, in this in this course, we are not going to write very original, uh, independent lines for the double bass, uh, because the 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 most famous composers 
at least in the classical period and in the early romantic period, used to uh, double double the the cello with the double basses. That was the most common function. Uh, well, and there you forgot. Uh, here you wrote unis in the in the one. I mean, well, here I'm going to write it. Uh, you wrote unis, and then uh, you have to write uh, divisi. If you want divisi, maybe it was a double stop. Maybe I wrote it. I didn't need the divisi. No. Sorry? The way I wrote it, I don't need the, to do divisi. Uh, so there you want a, a double stop? Yes. Ah, okay. Sorry, my bad. My bad. If you want a, a double stop, I, I thought that you wanted a DVC and you forgot to write it. If I had put the next chord the way you did with the low A as well, yes, I would have divided from that one, but I didn't need this for one. Yes, you're right. I mean, it depends. Uh, yes, I, I suggested to write a low A, so there you have to write DVC. Uh, uh, but uh, I mean, if I follow how you thought that that last measure, uh, you are correct. You can play the E and the C sharp with a with a double stop, and you don't have to write the uh, There was my mistake because I assumed that you forgot to write it. In those cases, when you want to make sure that the that you don't are you are not forgetting to write DVC, you can write non DVC. So non DVC is an indication that the orchestrator is telling the performers here I didn't forget to write DVC, but I want them to play multiple subs. Um, but well, the the. The orchestration in general is perfect, uh, very, very good. Now let's go to the one of uh, Laura. Uh, sorry. Here we are. Well, here I made a couple of corrections. First of all, the, you forgot to write the tempo mark. Uh, then uh, all the, the measures are like, all the numbers of the measures are different because the anacrusis, you wrote it like if it was measure one, but that is not a measure, that's why I I marked all the all the rest in the first measure. Uh, when you have an anacrusis, the, the piece starts with an anacrusis. That is not a measure. And we say that the first measure could be that one, the this one. Yeah, that's just because I wasn't quite sure how to do it on new score. So I just kind of had to find a different way on how to do it. Uh okay, okay. Well, yeah, I understand that it is um, uh, a problem with the program, but uh, that is kind of important because it changes all the measures. See that here, I I was a little bit confused and I have to write all the measures because they were moved. Um, for the performers, that is uh, a little bit like confusing to have to be calculating all the time the measures. Uh, but okay, I mean, it's a it's just a, a matter of the program. Um, well, then uh, the this work, this orchestration is is good. Uh, we have to see a couple of passages in more detail. But first of all, the dynamics uh, the dynamics are an important part of the music, and well, so we have to write them. Uh, I mean, you are studying to become more professional musicians, and you have to imagine that this will be played by real performers. And when you do that, you have to write the the measures correctly, the dynamics, the hair hairpins, 
and all that stuff. Uh, the tempo. Uh, but but well, the, the orchestration itself is is great. Uh, you you decided to put the melody in the first violin, which is great. Uh, the second violins in DVC, but you didn't write DVC. So if I if I see the score and I am I am a performer, let's suppose I am a violinist, and I have to play the part of the second violin, I would play multiple stops because you didn't write anything there. Okay. Uh, so that is uh, that is not a detail to write DVC because it changes the the performance. Um, but well, the the idea. Uh, is is great to put the VC in the second violin. Uh, then the the you double the melody with the viola, which is great also. Uh, and uh, the VC uh, in the in the cellos. Uh, well, the, the the orchestration is is very good. Um, here the same please if if you can uh, follow the 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 visual like structure of the piano piece and uh, and translate that that visual structure to the to the orchestration it is it will help you and it will help me and all the people that will play your piece uh, sometimes uh, we cannot do it because we need more space to write a uh, uh, I mean to write uh, all, all the things that are in the part of the piano, uh, but I orchestrated this piece a couple of years ago, and see that it is possible to write the first four measures in the in the in the first line. There I have the anacrusis, and then measure one, two, three, and four. Uh, and in the fourth, well, we have the, the, the end of the musical idea, a half cadence. Um, now let's go here again. Um, well, here, I don't know what happened, but you added one, one more measure. Yeah. Sorry. This is the same thing because I, it needed an upbeat. I was really confused on how to put it all in. So I just kind uh, of had to use a big break. Yes, okay, but there, the, these quarter notes you wrote are the same that you wrote then in the in the next measure. So, uh, yes, the, there is one measure there that we can delete it, but it's okay. I mean, are are things that are related to the program and not to your musical skills. So I understand them. Um, well, then again, the dynamics, uh, that passage starts with Forte, uh, and then with Sforzando. Um, the orchestration is good, but, uh, you, you added the, the double basses in a couple of notes, but here we have a problem. Why? Because we have a, a C sharp in the double bass. Uh, no, sorry. We are yeah here and an A in the cello. So there is a dissonance there that shouldn't be. Uh, is it clear? Yeah, no, that makes sense. The 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 better solution there, I think, that is the one that Georgios made. That he only decided to add this note. Um, because the if we see the the score, it it said the pedal indication was up to here, and so. Uh, I would do the same thing that did Gorgias. I would take out this note and this one also. Yeah. Uh, and there we won't have the problem 
of the that dissonance, the C sharp against A. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, well, here this is a uh, an important problem. What, what happened with the melody? You split it up in a lot of different instruments. I got a bit confused where the melody was, to be honest. <laughs> because the melody there is this one. And you wrote the, the first anacrusis in the lowest part of the, sec of the second violin. The next note in the upper part of the second violin. The next note in the first violin. And the, the other note in the second violin again. Yeah. Uh, they are the, the, the best solution is what Georgios did, that he, uh, he took all that notes and put it in the, in the first violin. Uh, I, I'll show you again what Georgios did so we can compare. Uh, Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, what is that part? I forgot where we were. Ah, here. Uh, see that here, he's playing this line with the first violin. Yeah. He jumps uh, one octave down. begins with the melody. Uh, now, let's see your work again. Uh, yes, that, that part is a really strange how you orchestrated it. <clears throat> uh, but well, that's why first we have to analyze the piece. We have to see where is the foreground, I mean the melody, where is the background understand like the meaning of the piece and yeah. then see how we can orchestrate that different parts. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> but well, uh, apart from that, the rest of the orchestration is really good. Thanks. Uh, well, there you had a, a problem with the, with the rhythm uh, the one that I marked with red, it is an it is an upbeat, not a downbeat. Okay. Uh, the 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 melody with the accompaniment goes. Okay. Uh, but well, it is just something that I mean, it is a a little mistake. Um, um another thing. Uh, if I were you, I would pay more attention to writing because there are some things that I am sure that are not problem of your musical skills, but are writing problems. And that confuses a lot the how you write the rest. Uh, always when we write the rest, we have to like uh, to uh, to to notice uh, where are the the downbeats, and you are like hiding the downbeats uh, with with your way of writing them. Uh, here, for example, if I had to read that measure, it is very difficult to read it. Okay, uh, it would be better to to write a uh, an eight eight rest. Then a quarter note rest, uh, and then an eight rest again would be much much clearer. Okay. Um. Well, th these are things about writing, but uh, I mean that this will like be I, I don't know how to say it. Uh, <laughs> The, the performers will be more comfortable reading a, a, a part that is well written. Um, 
Well, here you have a perfect authentic cadence. So uh, I recommend that you add the double bass. Uh, uh, you could uh, double the, the cello part with the, the double basses. It is just an, an option. It is not necessary to do that. Okay. Uh, uh, and there, I, I don't know what happened because the first time that you wrote that passage, uh, let me see, because I forgot what you did. Uh, the first time you wrote a lot of uh, a lot of notes in the in the double bass, and the second time you didn't write anything. Is that a mistake or is that on purpose? Um. I think it was on purpose. Oh, I don't know. Double bay. No, I think I just left it for that one part. So Early. there you, you didn't want the double bass? Well, uh, actually, I think there it would be better to follow one criteria. I mean, if there is a repetition and we did something the first time, then in the repetition, we we repeat what we did before. Yeah. Uh, in this case, if you, uh, if you, the first time you added this part to the double basis, uh, well, one octave lower, uh, the second time uh, 